Welcome to the Swim Swim Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, Swim Swim co-founder, Olympic gold medalist, Mel Stewart. And joining us today, we have one of my favorite people in swimming. She is a three-time world champion. She's a team captain for the DC Trident and the ISL. Uh, she has the best fashion on deck at any swim meet that she has ever been to. And uh, that's on full display today. Please welcome Madison Kennedy. Hey guys. Yeah. 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 Thanks Mel. Thanks for inviting me to be on. What an honor. We're super excited to have you on today. Like I said, you're one of my favorite people to talk to because you you have the biggest personality on the pool deck, uh, you and you have such a cool background in swim. You've been in it for so long. You've you've taken so many different directions with your swimming. Um, you let's. I kind of want to start at the beginning. You grew up in Connecticut. Uh, how'd you get into swimming? Oh, man, <laughs> while also playing lacrosse, oh, wow. soccer, horse riding, probably fifteen other sports. Uh, no, <laughs> no, ooh, just that, really. I mean, huh, we're going to go way back, huh? I mean, way I'm back. only 32, almost 33 in December, but I started swimming like 30, okay, 29 years ago. My mom swears it was before I was two, but I wasn't really on like a team until I was um, about four. And then she was like, get out of my face, put her in the water. I need a, like a rest. So I am from Connecticut. Um, Avon, Connecticut, little town. I have two sisters, and so I'm the oldest of two, and neither of my parents swim. So I, when I was three, this is verbatim from Joe Kennedy, my mom, said that I, when asked if I wanted to do gymnastics or ballet, which, oh, I wish I could do either of those things. I mean, now um, or ever. I said, I want to swim. So at three years old, she's like, <laughs> okay, are you sure? We don't really do that. I mean, no hate. She just, she and my dad were dancers, horseback riders, and hockey players. So that wasn't really something that my family knew about. So anyway, she was like, I'll fix your wagon. Brought me to like a freezing cold lesson pool. And I still hate cold water, but it didn't make me hate swimming. So, but my parents coached me in soccer and lacrosse and a little bit of swimming, but swimming, soccer, lacrosse, riding horses, that was something that my three sisters and I did all year long. And I was just talking to my mom about this recently, actually. Um, I had such a great childhood because I was able to do all these things. I know a lot of people aren't, don't have access maybe, or don't have the ability or the support, but I always have. And I think that's a large part to why I'm still swimming now. I still have a lot of support from people, maybe not every day, like, Hey, let's do this. Cause I'm not that type of person, but just such uh, genuine um, happiness that I'm doing something that I like. So that's really cool. I'm not a lot of people have that. And I always had that growing up. So I'm grateful. And thinking back on it, you know, you reflect when you see a lot of things going on now that you're like, oh, gosh, they, that's a hard situation. My parents were great. And my sisters and my husband, who is now helping. I mean, he's writing a lot of my stuff now. So it's really cool. He's so smart. That, uh, that was the, I wanted to, we'll jump around a lot. Um, oh, I never jump around. I'm very linear. <laughs> um, we're really going to have to keep it on track. <sighs> Natalie said it best. She was like stream of consciousness. That's Madison. I was like, I am. Yes. Um, so yeah, speaking of your husband, he's now Eric Lane. He's now the, uh, the head coach at Swim Mac. Uh, which yes. is acting which is head crazy. coach of a mag, which I have to say that for it to be like the actual <laughs> title, but yeah, he's right. head coach. Um, so so has, cool. Yeah. How has that impacted your training? Cause I know, I mean, I know for a while you were just swimming alone a few times a week mm -hmm. and, you know, staying active in lots of other ways, but, um, yeah. Has that changed how much you've been swimming, what your trainings look like? It has. Um, so he coaches a college or he has coached a college group, I think, for three year, three summers now at Mac. Mm -hmm. um, even when he wasn't in charge of a group, he was more of like a director of coaching role or staff uh, development role. 
at SwimMac and had Vola Multisport, which was a dry land and a strength training program and business that was housed in SwimMac. Uh, so he did the college group um, the last three years and I swam with them the last few summers or the last few, all of the summers. And you're also in college. I, yeah, I am. Mm-hmm. Yep. I want to go back. Well, I've already finished, started ma- my master's, but I would like to go back and finish it in psychology. But let's move back to Eric. Um, so got to swim with a lot of the college kids that have been on Mac. So I might've known them when they were younger and now they're like juniors or seniors. In- uh, around. Oh, oh, you f- oh did I? You, you froze for oh, a second. It's all, it's all good. It's all good. It's only a few seconds. We just, you know, we still got back. To okay. Frozen image of okay. you. We're good. Right. That's what I'm worried about. So, uh, so he brought a lot of uh, different concepts, I think, than most college swimmers are used to. A lot of stuff that Eric and I talk about has influenced my training or my solo training over the past couple of years. And he has just a broader base of or exposure to the amount of kids to coach and to teach while I have the experience of doing it. He was also a swimmer. He sees a lot of how these kids have kind of grown up or where they are when they come to that college group program. And I, this year, after not getting in for however long, nine weeks or something, almost 10 weeks, I started swimming back with them. And it was so fun. It really was fun. And I like swimming by myself. I prefer the pool to have no one else in it. A 50 meter pool when I'm the only one swimming is ideal, (laughs) which sounds very diva behavior, but it's a perfect time to have that in a pandemic. (laughs) But it was great to swim with people. I mean, I loved being in college and going to Cal and I liked my experience or loved my experience at Team Elite. So although I don't want to swim with the group all the time, I think it is so valuable. It's just, it's so nice to be able to like give little tips or I know that I got tips when I was swimming. So it's nice to pass certain things along that I really valued. And I'm swimming. I love practicing. I do. I like competing better, but I really enjoy what Eric writes for me. And with me, I'm like, I don't really like this. I don't want to do this. (laughs) Um, Like 30, 30 of anything, even if it's a 25, which it was, I'm like, I don't want to do that. But I do want to do it. And it's things that I know that I enjoy and know will make me better. And that's what swimming on my own is all about is I wanted to enjoy it. I I think it might be appropriate to step in and just give us, give our our listeners an idea of what a Madison Kennedy workout looks like. What are we talking about? 500, maybe 500, one up, uh, 25 all out and you're done. Is that it? (laughs) I wish. I feel like that's the Gary Hall. That's Gary Hall. That's Gary Hall. (laughs) Give it up. Oh, I wish. I mean, I, I, can I wear a cape? I will wear a cape or anything, any accoutrement I will wear um, to the blocks. But I cannot, or not, I cannot. That's not my training plan. So it used to be the past three years, four years swimming alone has been like 2K. Three to five times a week. I do a lot of dry land, um, meaning I teach a bar class. I do Pilates. I lift heavy. I like to walk. Like there's, there's a lot of things that, you know, you do throughout an active day. And again, with active, my husband, I like to go camping. Like there's with hiking, there's a lot of things that I did that wasn't necessarily in the water. Um, so it is really short. It takes me like an hour and 15. Actually, let's be real. It takes me two hours because there's other people there at that point. I need to talk to everybody. How's everyone's day? Okay, now I only have 15 minutes to do this. Efficiency is key. <laughs> so that is a Madison workout. But now I'm doing a little bit more, probably not double that, but like a thousand more. Um, but a little bit longer stuff because we have ISL season two coming up. And as you so graciously said, I am team captain for DC Tridents. It's so an honor as well. Um, but I swam the 100 last season for relays and the 50. And so if you don't know, I only swim the 50 usually at meets, sometimes the 100. So doing 100, a 50, and then maybe another 50 was like, oh, my God, you guys, <laughs> What? So I think um, and short course meters or yards hasn't always been my best since college because I so prefer just the length of a 50 meter, but 
I have been enjoying my longer sets, as I said, and I feel, I feel really good about the hundred. So watch out people. <laughs> do, do you think that, uh, that nine, 10 weeks out of the water helped, helped with the appreciation of training a little bit longer for you? Mm. I would not be completely honest if I said that no, it didn't. Um, because I, there are parts of longer training that I did miss. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I missed swimming so much really. And it wasn't the like check the box of, Oh, I did this yard. It's swimming to me is my meditation time. Really that I have so much love for how I feel when I am swimming. And that goes into how, why I wanted to swim by myself in the first place. I wanted the thing that I like to do the most with myself, with my body, this life I've created or have had help in creating. But I mean, I live in this vehicle and I love how it feels when I swim. And there were just points where I didn't feel good while training just because I had to Oh, froze it again. Okay, we're back. I think you're good. I I was swim myself, so I knew how I could figure out how my body felt best. And is still frozen. You are a little frozen. No, you're good. I'm sorry. It's Charlotte, okay. North Carolina, doesn't have the best service right now. We're all good now. Um. So I, okay. It was all about how I felt. My body um, has just felt really good the last couple of years swimming, doing what I want to do. And man, missing out on that for nine weeks. Oh, it's not fun. I mean, I did other things. Eric and I started to play lacrosse, got to run. I haven't done run training in so long, but I mean, all, a lot of other swimmers can speak to the fact that you just don't feel, or maybe they, maybe this is not how people feel, but I just, I didn't feel like myself totally could explore different avenues, but that time to just be in that wonderful state in the waters. <laughs> I hope we stay safe and don't have to lock down again. 100%. I, I, th I think that we, we, we ought to bring this up. This up. It's a, uh, in terms of the Madison Kennedy fan base and the people who came to know and love you really began. So with many. Awe. No. <laughs> it started with all. And it started with my wife watching a video of you and going, you could never do that. That was the rope climbing video, which demonstrated your power to weight ratio was off the charts. Um, just out of curiosity, I think I've asked you this before, but just out of curiosity, compared to most men on the team or, or your peers, could you could you put them to shame doing that? Because that was just that was pretty extraordinary. And thanks, Mel. <laughs> I mean, that did happen. Oh, so I mean, thanks. Oh, People on Team Elite, pretty sure everyone could climb a rope, which is awesome. I mean, they were all great athletes. Yeah, really, truly. And I mean, climbing a rope is no joke, whether you are using your legs or not. Like if your feet are like clamped around that rope, man, that's barely helping you, but it's a little bit. Um, I mean, I think going upside down is a fun technique. It's hard, yeah. But I that was... Mm, I'm not a very good endurance swimmer. I'm not a good trainer, I, I don't think. And that's not me putting myself down and limiting myself. I just, that's not where I excel. I, but I'm strong. And I think I know how to apply some sort of somehow um, strength to weight. And my husband talks about that with me all the time. He's like, you might not have to be as big. That was one of the things that I remember coaches used to say is you need to be bigger if you want to compete against like, man, all these strong women, you know? Yeah. I mean, even Ariana, Vanderpool Wallace, she was not as tall as I was, but damn, was she strong or is strong, you know? So, but yeah, and I, of course, wanted to be able to do that upside down rope thing. I, I like to be body aware. I like to find things that are fun to do and are body aware, but I didn't get my hair wet in that. And that was the real crowning achievement. So you climbed the rope upside down and it's just uh, the control that you had on the rope was extraordinary. But it was, it was an you, incredible Mel. display of strength. You got to put this video in, in with the podcast. Helmet, just so Please. People can, can, can <laughs> My it. crowning achievement. My it's hair is so different then. But it, it, just, it just shows that it's a, it's, you're, you're someone who 
fitness is a part of your lifestyle, which you shared. And mm-hmm. I, and, and, I, and I, we're going to we're moving to this, but it's sort of like, this is your lifestyle. How long, how long are you going? You've been a pro, you've been an elite for 12 years. Are you going to be an elite? Are you going to be like 45 and be like, yeah, I'm dropping fast times. Just you know, if you- <laughs> Wouldn't that be, I hope so. I mean, listen, I would not be the first. I would be following in footsteps of some mentors, some people I look up to for sure. I mean, again, I wouldn't be the first one. So I just am trying to not emulate so much because I don't know what other older swimmers, older, I'm guys, I am 32, like almost 33. PSA to people out there that are younger, like that, it is not old. And I don't feel any different, really. I feel this is something common. I feel great. I really do. I feel as if I have the same excitement about things at, in my body as, you know, when I was learning things in college. But I think I have such an appreciation and a greater awareness of how little like strands or little things work within myself. And that would be so cool if I could stay, I don't mean relevant, like relevant, but time-wise, performance-wise, relevant. Um, because that is an achievement for me and not to give myself no credit, but, um, it is an achievement to stay, you know, making a semifinal or making a final amongst all these fast, fast and consistent of incoming swimmers. And that is also why I, man, I love making teams. That sounds maybe silly, like everyone does. Right. But I love making teams to, to meet and interact with and get a chance to perform and get a checkup on how my training's going. And that's really what races are. It's seeing if what you're doing and trying to construct is going to be successful. And there are many things to dictate success, not just a faster time. Sometimes it's, you know, I held this rate and I did Two for us. We'll be back in a few seconds. So yeah, I, oh man, I'm really always getting cut off when it's the most important. Can you tell? Yeah, you're giving me that. What is that? Is that this? You, you're doing great. Keep this? going. You, you you dropped Crap. out just okay, for, for a few seconds. You're all, you're all good. You're all good. You can keep going. Okay. I'm sorry about the internet. Really, I am. No, it's it's all good. It's, uh, you're, you're, okay, you're, I said so I'm sorry about the internet. I'll keep going though. No, you're you're good. As 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 a team leader in, you know, with, with the ISL, with your ISL franchise as team captain, you know we're hearing behind the scenes. We haven't been reporting. We've been reporting a lot, but we're you know we we also wait for official word. Um, we know that the mm-hmm. testing apparatus and everything oh, God. that's heading into this this fall season is is a lot. Um, do you have anxiety heading into the season? Are you excited about it? Well, you know, what, what, what's happening in terms of conversations among your teammates and your peers in the International Swimming League? It's a good question, Mel. I, I would be, I don't have anxiety per se about going. I'm going to miss, I mean, my husband's staying here. There's an opportunity for him to go as my home coach, but he's, head coach now somewhere like he has so many more um, things he has to keep in line. So he won't be able to go. And that's a bummer because that's one of the things I love about pro swimming is often he gets to join me and we get to travel around afterward. And I understand that it is a sensitive time. And so going around and traveling isn't, you know, that's the least of our worries that we can't do that. So the anxiety is that I will miss things here. Um, I think all the communication that we've had amongst the league, especially by my GM, Caitlin Sanino, is she gives us all the information that she gets and translates it, digests it so that it's easy for us to understand. Because, I mean, again, I've been doing this for over a decade and I'm still like, what do I need to bring? Like, what do I need to do? Like, I mean, there is, there is some degree of me totally just giving control in that point. And I'm just like, someone will tell me and I'll figure this out about certain things. Um, but now I feel like it's going to be planned, thought out, safe, um, fun. It's a, it'll be nice for us to compete, train, be together. I get to see a lot of my friends, which will be, I mean, Natalie's not coming this year because she has other things that she's going to be doing during that time. Oh no. 
and like collecting new ones. I'm such a creep, a people collector. <laughs> uh, but there are six six weeks. It's six weeks, and there's competitions almost every weekend. So that'll be cool to see if I can um, performance wise. Just that'll be similar to college, and I'm excited. Usually, I have to wait like once a month to race. Are you following yeah. it? I mean, like we we just broke the news that uh, the Aussies can't travel, so they're out. Um, and uh, I don't know if that's mm -hmm. if that's bumming people out, I, I, or maybe it's just hey, we're shouldering this because it's this is the pandemic and the the, the world we're living in. But uh, is that has that been something that any, anyone internally has talked about? How do you guys feel about that? Hmm. I mean. I know, so there are a few Australians on our team that have all already or gave us the news via our Instagram group text or women of Trident messages. Um, but overall, I, I don't want to play, play it off that I'm not connected because I, I am in some ways, but a lot of swimming news and not gossip, but like the, the current social affairs or what, who's doing what, I don't know. And I don't know sometimes and I don't mean to say what, I don't know what's going on and pass that off, but I don't know the intricacies of things. Um, from what I heard, it was because they, it's a, not a safety issue, but kind of want to keep it uniform and maybe cutting funding. I'm not sure, but that would be, that would be reason to consider, you know, for anyone. And even if you're, if this is a paid thing, it's a, like a paid contract. It's still, I mean, there's so many things to take into account than just these six weeks. And so I don't know the inner workings of any of that. But we did hear trickles of that, and now it's official that they're out. So, I mean, darn. <laughs> I mean, we had some great people, and I, it's it would have been fun to see competitors that are on the Australian team. So I'll have to wait. Uh, you get any moment? I don't want to step on you. Go ahead, unless no, go you ahead. have something. No. Oh yeah, I, oh, I, I just I, I'm, for for our listeners out there, it, it, I think most everyone knows, but um, if you don't. Uh, Madison is the has, has probably has the greatest career in terms of the Olympic trials and in terms of improvement trials over trials. And when we say that trials is the meat of tears, we got to put it on the table. It is your 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 last Olympic trials was probably the the most dramatic and and it was tough. That was a it's a dramatic competition, and we were with you. Our hearts were with you there, and. Uh, is, is this, is this something where you like, is, you know, you're, if you're race ready and you're, and you're, you're in the hunt, are we going to be seeing you at trials after trials after trials into your forties? That, that's really the only question. Oh yeah. Have. Okay. So my answer will be a few part first. Yes. I, that's trials is such a crazy meat. It's so cool. It is. I say cool a lot. Everything's cool to me. Um, it is a, it's cool. And I can see that it, it is heartbreaking for some people. And that is not a pass off for some people. It, I, I've been in 2008, 2012, 16, hoping for 20, will be 21, hopefully. Um, it's not to say that those were easy outcomes, but I don't agree that it is the meat of tears. I think that is an unfortunate and this is not by you guys, but it's by the swim community. Unfortunate labeling in that what an accomplishment to get there and to race there and an accomplishment of your career or the months leading up to it that you have a shot and that you have a shot and you think you have a shot. Like, you know, it's it's taken not a while to reframe, but I, I mean, I thought it was the coolest thing when I first made it on in a Connecticut. I don't even remember what meet it was. And I made it and I ran around the deck to find my coach because I had dropped <laughs> just a little time to make it. Um, and going in 08, first time with Cal, I was there for a year and I was able to see all of my idols, people I had seen in Splash Magazine or Swimming World or on TV. I mean, all of a sudden they were there and it's, so neat to be amongst them and to continue to be even the ones that are, you know, have left us or the new ones coming up. It's, it's, I'm so proud to be amongst the different eras um, and to see the new ones come in, the old ones leave, but yeah, 
meat of tears is hard because I, I get it. People build it up and it's something that people want, but that's a hard thing to go to. I'm going to the meat of tears, you know, like I'm either going to be devastated or I'm going to make the Olympic team. It's like, I think there's a pretty big in between. <laughs> and I think it's perspective. It is perspective. You <laughs> cannot base your entire thing on one swim, one swim. What? I mean, it's great if you make the team. That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. But you can't base your whole career on just that swim either. And it's what, so it's that's the most where, dramatic. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. So that's, I mean, and that's, I feel like that's where you really stand out, Madison, is that you have built your swimming career on enjoying swimming. And I think one of the ways you've done so is you've diversified your portfolio in so many ways. You've dipped your toe into so many non-swimming things. And I think what you said it great people go there and they're either going to be devastated or they're going to be elated. And that's because they just swim and, uh, and they focus so yeah. they put all their eggs in that basket. And um, we've touched on it. You know, we, we talked about how much you actually do train in the water, um, but give us a little more insight into over the years, what you've done outside of the water to keep that balance and to keep you and, and to grow your perspective into one of just really enjoying swimming for you and for swimming? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a great question. And I also wanna say that I, getting third, everybody, you know, every, everybody in the swimming world talks about that. And, um, or I can identify with that in a way, I guess, like, oh, like, can you imagine? Oh, that'd be the worst place to get. I'm not saying it was yes, but it was yes. Like I got third at Olympic trials next to two, Olympians that are fantastic swimmers, um, so fast, so mature in their young performance age. And, you know, I haven't spent a lot of time with either or in, with a lot of people that are currently on the national team if we don't make the same teams um, in certain events. But, you know, if say a couple people go to this meet, I go to this meet, you just sometimes you don't get to blend, but that you get to when you race. And, I don't know. I, I was very proud. And I, I know also that I was scared at first or when I went into it, like, what will it feel like to not make it is what I thought at first. And to come to terms with that to terms over the weeks leading up to that is you can't be scared. That's why it hurts so much for people because they don't know how it's going to feel. And honestly, I either was going to make it or not make it. So you, yeah, I was at peace. So as soon as I found out I didn't, all right, take a breath. You're on to like the next part of your life. And it wasn't, oh, that I wasn't making it. It was just, all right, okay, like this is the next step. And people were so excited. I know I've said this for me, but, you know, Abby must have been more excited thinking that I made it than, than she was thinking that, you know, maybe she didn't know that she didn't right away know that she had made it. She was so happy for me, you know, like that's so pure and sweet. Anyway, so what I've done over, gosh, since I moved to Charlotte, um, because I started swimming on my own right after Cal, I was at Cal. So all 2011, Eric coached me um, when I was still living in California, moved to Charlotte in the December one of that year, and then was swimming with Team Elite up until 2016. So right after trials kind of went on my own. Um, so I teach a bar class. I've said that before. Um, that's like a standing Pilates method. It's called Hilliard studio method. A mother and daughter came up with that. They live here in Charlotte. They are my dear friends. Um, but it's with weights and it's a little mo like heavyweights, lightweights, but a lot of. Oh. She dropped out for just again. a second. She's coming back. She usually takes about okay. three seconds. Well, Here I am. Oh, we hear you. Am I back? Slowly. She's coming back yeah, slowly. Yeah, yeah. I think she's back she's now. Back. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so anyway, yeah, that Pilates. I teach a bar class. Mm -hmm. Pilates based method with weights. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. Um, I like to have been able to find a lot of um, different grace, different control, different muscles and postures and throughout Pilates, regular Pilates, which I also do, and 
through a bar method. I work at Lululemon still after all of these years. Um, it's been eight years now, but I'm only one, one day a week there, one precious day at a new store, which is close to my house. So, um, you know, I, for all the changes the company's gone through, that is the, the dreams of that company and the bigger perspective and what I learned there and how, and do continue to learn as we navigate the current social climates of the whole world. Um, I had a lot of good training and good per, like I said before, perspective from that company, from Lululemon, from just what they give us in terms of resources to interact with people, to interact with not just one-on-one -on -one individuals, but in a community. That's something I really loved being at Lulu is I got to Charlotte and for the first year had pretty, I started working, I guess in August or September of 2012. So like a year or so or less than I'm, when I moved here. Um, but I didn't have my network that I had at Cal, you know, like different friends from other classes. I didn't know where all the cool places to work out were, or the different places to travel to or different boutiques, coffee shops, people, just a fun network. And so I didn't look for it in Lululemon because I didn't even know that's what it would provide, but I wanted to work at a clothing store because I do love clothes and fashion. I always loved Lululemon and could never work there because of my college training schedule. And I have such an appreciation for all clothing, really. And I love the clothes. I do. And I work out in them constantly. So, you know, there's other brands I wear and I don't just wear workout clothes. In fact, I probably wear them less now. But um, yeah, so I do that. And hmm, I just I love fashion. I love dressing. I love redoing my spaces. I I like to just come around my city and see different things because I won't live here forever. And I want to make sure that it's in me. That's a, that's a great answer. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you spoke of redoing your room. We talked about this. We're down to about five minutes, but I have to ask, uh, tell us, tell us about one or two of your dream catchers behind you. You said you've, oh my you've gathered, you've accumulated them along among your many, many travels. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite? What's, what's, what's a good story behind one or two of them? Oh man. Okay. Um, and I would say I want to redo my room, but I'm going to be leaving for so long. So uh, I'll do that maybe when I come back. But um, so my husband is colorblind, first of all. So he doesn't get to appreciate the true colors. Um, wow. So I always wanted to have a pink bedroom, like light pink. He's like, sure, it's going to look great to me. So why not? So <laughs> stay tuned. So this, is that, my, is that something from a one. wedding? I think that's something... I feel like something has to do with the wedding right there. I, I can't remember. Okay. So what's cool is this one. Uh huh. It's from Guatemala. Right. I went there to do like a little it was a clinic. It was for Gisela Morales. Um, she is my age, Guatemala swimmer. She, awesome. So cool. Um, but I went there and got that guy. I made that one. Wow. <laughs> okay. The reason yeah. I'm like, dream catchers is because that's what I wanted on my wall. It just looked good. It, I really did like it. I didn't just put it up there, but I collected them. I think this one's from Asheville. Mm -hmm. One of these is from California. Eric and I like to go camping remotely, like really remote. We have a rooftop tent. So every little town we go to, we'll beach towns too. We'll go in and get some of those jewelry people have made me over the years. That's wow. a knife. It's a little stabby knife for, um, it's an antler handle, you know, in case sometime in the night I run over to this wall, I don't grab what the flower crown that I wore to a festival with my sisters in 2012. And hopefully I grab the little knife. So, <laughs> and this picture will awesome. commemorate. Do you see that bull? Mm -hmm. Because my mom thinks my nose ring makes me look like a bull. So, okay, mom, I got a picture to put in my room about it. <laughs> Just, that's just you owning it. So, but the real question is, with your husband being colorblind, if you guys are having a moment in, in, in your relationship where things aren't working out and he's wearing oh. jacked up clothes and he's ready to go out in public, do you just let that happen? No way. <laughs> no way. First of all, he has great, he has great simple classic style and first 
first of all, that is a reflection of me. Just kidding. <laughs> he would never. I buy all his clothes. <laughs> Will to the end. We okay. appreciate that. We appreciate yes. that. And he, and he is a, he's a, you, we are, you haven't, you guys haven't met him, have you? Neither of you have? Only seen pictures and been I like, think wow. Maybe once at a swim meet. Oh. I know, well, maybe like, now I you can. Him. Yeah, he is my other half. Truly, I'm lucky. Yeah, I miss his long hair, but he looks good with the short hair too. Yeah, your hair is short now. I, uh, yeah, quarantine. Yeah. Sorry, no, we it's don't just, have it, like any more time. <laughs> yeah, no, I like it. Mine will be blue, hopefully by the 20th. Nice. Good ISL. Gotta, you know, haven't had my hair done in so long. Um, Madison, we're, right. ju- we're about to co- about to close out. We'll have to bring you back on after ISL to get get your recap yeah. of Budapest. But good luck there, and I hope your travels Thank go you. well. Thank you, guys. I miss seeing you on deck. Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. Soon. Thank <laughs> you right. again. Thank you. See you, Madison. Bye. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.